one went. Oh dear. Never mind, I'll start again. Busy, busy with my pen. So, I can do it if I try. Easy peasy pudding and gherkins. Writing verse is so much fun. Cheering in the summer weather. Makes you feel alert and bright. Especially when you get it. More or less the way I want it. Daffodils by Williams Wordsworth. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats high over veils and hills. But all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Continuous is the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way. They stretched in never-ending lines along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance, tossing their heads in sprightly dance. The waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not but be gay in such a joking company. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. For oft, when on my couch I lie in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye which is the bliss of solitude, and then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodil. Assembly by Steve Turner. We assemble, that's why it's called assembly. We sit cross-legged. The area of the bottom multiplied by the number of pupils is greater than the area of the whole floor. We squiggle, we squeeze, we squash, we squabble. Jamie's asked to stay behind. Behind is another word for bottom. Miss walks on the stage. Third is Miss, Miss, Sir, Miss, Sir, Miss, Miss and Miss. We have a talk about being good. It is good to be good, it is bad to be bad. We will all be good. We sing a song about trees. The bone in my bottom cuts into the floorboards. I am not worried about the floorboards. Miss reads out the notices, but nobody notices. We stand up. I pull my bottom bone out of the floorboards. We line up like soldiers, like prisoners, like refugees. We file out in a sensible manner. The hall is now empty, except for Jamie. Skimmer shanks the railway cat by T.S. Eliot. There's a whisper down the line at 11 that evening. The nightmare's ready to depart. Saying Skimble, where is Skimble? Has he gone down the thimble? Let's find him where the train can't start. With the garden and the boys and the station master's daughters, they are searching high and low. Saying Skimble, where is Skimble? For this is very nimble, and the nightmare just can't go. At 11.42, when the signal's nearly due, and the passengers are standing to a man, and Skimble will appear and him soon to the ring. He's been busy in the luggage van. He gives one flash of his glass green eyes and the signal goes all clear and we're off at last for the northern part of the northern hemisphere. We say that by charge. It is Skimble who's in charge of the sleeping car express. From the driver and the guards to the baton playing cars, he will supervise them all more. Down the corridor he paces and examines all the faces of the travellers in the first and the third. He establishes control by a regular patrol and had no words if anything occurred. He will watch it out with me and he sees what you are thinking, and it's certain that he doesn't approve of a loud and quiet. So the folk are very quiet when Skimble is about to on the roof. You'll play no friend with Skimble Shanks, he's a cat that cannot be ignored. So nothing goes wrong on the northern bit when Skimble Shanks is aboard. Oh, it's very pleasant, and you find your little death with your name written up on the door. And the berth is very neat, with a newly folded sheet. There's not a speck of dust on the floor. There is every sort of light. You can make it dark and bright. There's a handle that you turn to make a breeze. There's a funny little basin. You're supposed to wash your face in. And the crown to shut the window if you sneeze. Then the garlic and politely will knock you very brightly. Do you like your morning tea weak or strong? But Skim was just behind him and was ready to remind him that Skim would not let anything go wrong. When you creep into your cosy berth and pull up the counterpane, you ought to reflect that it's very nice to know that you won't be bothered by mice. You can leave one back to the railway cat, the cat of the railway train. In the watches of the night, he is always fishing right. Every now and then, he has a cup of tea. And perhaps a drop of scotch while he is keeping on the watch. 
and this time here and there to catch a flea. You were fast asleep at school and so you never knew that he was walking up and down the station. You were sleeping all the while he was busy at Carlo Highway. where he greets the station master with elation. While you saw him acting free so he speaks to the police, there's anything they want to know about. When you get to Carlo Gate, though, you do not have to wait, the skimmer tanks will help you to get out. He gives you a wave of his long flowered tail which says, I'll see you again. You will meet without fail on the Midnight Mail, the cat of the railway train. The Soldier by Rupert Brooke If I should die, think only this of me, that there's some corner of a foreign field that is forever England. There shall be in that rich earth a richer dust concealed, a dust whom England bore shaped, made aware, gave once her flowers to love, her ways to roam, a body of England's breathing English air, washed by the rivers, blessed by the sons of hope. And think, this heart all evil shed away, a pulse in the eternal mind, no less gives somewhere back the thoughts by England given, her sights and sounds dreams happy as her day, and laughter, learn to friends and gentleness, in hearts at peace under an English heaven. Paper People by Harry Baker I like people. I'd like some paper people. They'd be purple paper people. Maybe pop up purple paper people. Proper pop up purple paper people. How would you prop up proper pop up purple paper people? I'd probably prop up proper pop up purple paper people with a proper pop up purple paper people paper clip, but I'd pre prepare appropriate adhesives as alternatives. A cheeky pack of blue tack, just in case the paper slipped. I could build a pop up metropolis, but I wouldn't want to deal with other paper people politics. Paper politicians with their paper-thin policies. Broken promises without appropriate apologies. There'd be a little paper me and a little paper you and we could watch paper TV and it would all be paper view. We'd see the poppy paper wrappers wrap about the paper package or watch paper people carriers get stuck in paper traffic on the A4. There'd be a paper princess Kate but We'd all stare at Paper Pepper, and we'd all live in fear of Killer Jack, the Paper Ripper, because the paper propaganda propagates the people's prejudices. Papers printing pictures of the photogenic terrorists. It's a little paper me, and a little paper you, and in a pop-up population, people's problems pop up too. There'd be that pompous paper parliament who remained out of touch, and who ignored the people's protests about all the paper cuts. Then, the peaceful paper protests would get blown to paper pieces by the confetti cannons manned by preemptive police. Yes. <clears throat> there'd still be paper money, so there'd still be paper greed, and paper piggy bankers pocketing more than they need, purchasing their potpourri to pepper their paper properties, whilst others live in poverty, and named it large properly. A proper poor economy, where so many are proper poor, yet while their needs get ignored, the money goes to big wars. Origami armies unfold plans for paper planes, while we remain imprisoned by our own paper chains. But the greater shame is that it always seems to stay the same. What changes is who's in power. They're choosing how to lay the blame. They're naming names, forgetting that these are the names of people. Because in the end, it all comes down to people. I like people. Because even when the situation is dire, it is only other people who are able to inspire. And on paper, it's hard to see how we all cope. But even in the bottom of Pandora's box, there's still hope. And I still hope. Because I believe in people. People have the potential to be powerful. Just because the people in power tend to pretend to be victims, we don't all need to succumb to the system.
paper population is no different. There'll be a little paper me, and a little paper you, and you could watch paper TV, and it would all be paper view. And in a pop-up population, people's problems pop up too, but even if the whole world fell apart, then we'd still make it through. Because we're people.